Hi guys, welcome back on my channel. My name is Kat and welcome to Ken Bechtel. So today I am going to be doing my June wrap up part one. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my June wrap up part one. So the first thing that I read this month was Nip the Buds, Shoot the Kids by Kenzaburo Oe, who is a very, very strong Japanese writer. And in this one, we follow a group of boys who are evacuated from their boarding school during a time of war and they're taken to a neighboring village but the villagers don't want them there because they're a drain on resources and they're seen as unwanted children. So the boys move from one village to another until finally they're put in a village and then the person who brought them there tells them to stay when he goes back for more children. However, a plague breaks out and the villagers basically don't adhere to societal norms anymore and it's kind of a Lord of the Flies type scenario where the boys are left to fend for themselves and things get very, very, very dark. It was like a compulsive read. I could not put it down. I was terrified for what would happen to the boys, also intrigued, but it is very dark and very depressing. So when I read this book, I had like a reading slump massively because I just felt depressed, like I didn't want to read anything else. I didn't want to think about anything else. I just wanted something probably light and romantic, which then led me to pick up Jane Eyre Laid Bare by Charlotte Bronte and Eve Sinclair. So this is a retelling of Jane Eyre, but honestly, it was so bad. Like, so, so bad. I don't know how this even was published. So it's essentially exactly Jane Eyre only like all the details of her background are glossed over and then suddenly Darcy is like oddly into like BDSM and like no 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 this book was not good it it was very bad um not bad enough that I'm like mad at it but bad enough that I would never ever recommend this to someone and I read it because of all the books on my TBR shelf I thought like this would be the easiest one to read because I thought it would be like fluffy erotica kind of um no it was bad and it made me a little angry because of how it retold Jane Eyre <laughs> so this one I give um, like one and a half two stars and the nip the bud shoot the kids I gave four stars um, it was very strong so yeah I read one that was very dark, and then I had a reaction, and then I read this one thinking it would be fluffy, smut, and then it was not, it was not so good. So yeah, moving on. And the next two that I read are manga, and they are My Brother's Husband, Volume 1 and Volume 2 by Gengoro Tagame. A lot of people have been hearing about this book because it's getting a lot of praise, especially in Japan, and I agree with that hype. So I gave them both four and a half stars. So we follow a normal Japanese man who is a stay-at-home dad to his young daughter Kana until the one day when his estranged dead brother's husband, Mike, shows up from Canada. So Mike has shown up to see all the places that his beloved husband had talked about being in childhood and meeting his family um, because Mike is grieving for his loss of Ryuji. So this book explores the dynamics of family and also of being queer abroad and in Japan, and also how foreigners are viewed. So the feedback that I've heard from this book is that a lot of Westerners who read it think it is really like old. I'm gonna tell you, in Japan, Japan's probably about 20 years behind. So the things that they talk about, such as not using derogatory language when you talk about queer people, or not viewing queer people as inherently more sexual or more deviant than anyone else, um, these are things that Japan is struggling with currently. I think that this is an amazingly progressive work in Japan and it was actually serialized in um, a magazine that is for a broad audience. It's not specifically towards a queer audience. So I think it will go a long way to open people's minds, especially younger people who maybe have more open sensibilities in terms of the queer spectrum. So I really loved it, made me cry. It's really lighthearted, but the way that the father who re represents kind of conservative Japanese mindset versus the daughter who's more open and she questions things readily. Um, it just like broke my heart to see kind of the dynamic there and the struggle because I know that Japanese society still has a lot of that to do. 
Um, so I really do recommend them and they are just great overall. So the next one that I read was My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness by Nagata Kabi. It is a memoir about her struggles with mental illness, sexuality, and fitting into society in Japan. So as she gets older, she realizes that a lot of the elements of Japanese society that most people fit in very readily and easily, she just can't seem to fit into. So something as easy as going to a part-time job, she has a lot of anxiety amongst other mental issues and she's often late to work or can't go or just feels a crushing depression that um, she doesn't have any close relationships with anyone and no one has given her a hug in a while so seeing the customers makes her sad. There's a lot at play in her life and so when she quits her part-time work because she can't handle it anymore, she's fired, then she goes home and she lives with her family who is kind but they can't really understand why she can't get her shit together, for lack of a better word, and she really struggles with finding what she wants to do. So as she's kind of doodling, she thinks that she wants to do a story about her life, and that's kind of what she knows best. So her drawing style is just a complete rejection of the male gaze. She's said numerous times that um, she's just drawn it in the unsexy real way that she is, and the things that she talks about are totally real and happened. I just thought it was a great exploration of a lot of mental illness and not being able to fit into how society thinks you should be, even your own family. So I really do like it, I gave it 4 stars overall, and I really do highly recommend it. Okay, and so since I did two manga series, I was feeling upper up again um, after the crushing depression of OA, so I read I Am A Cat Volume 1 by Natsume Soseki, and in this one we follow a house cat who is recounting the life of his master who is a professor and I thought this this would be like an adorable accounting but actually spoiler alert this cat is a bit of an asshat so he kind of hates his master and thinks his master is stupid and that everyone in the house is useless the children are terrible well the children are terrible like they hang him upside down by his tail and the children are terrible and they should be reprimanded but um the master is also frivolous and just the dialogue between him and his male friends is just like so boring and so pretentious and obnoxious that I know that this is a volume one but I have no desire to read on. I think that I got a good feeling for uh, Soseki's first book which this is and um, I think that we can call it a day and just say three stars, didn't hate it, didn't love it, cat's kind of a dick which is funny but uh, I don't need to read anymore so yeah. So after that I read Bloom Into You, which is another queer repped manga, and in this one we follow a main character who has recently been to confessed to by a boy, and she was really hoping that she would feel something, but she didn't, so she is wondering how she can reject him nicely when she sees an older girl who is a year older than her reject a boy and just say that she's never felt anything for anyone, so the younger student really wants to um, learn how the girl is so confident in herself and how she can reject someone so smoothly and so kindly without getting a lot of feelings hurt. So she, when she asks the girl to take her under her wing, the girl actually realizes that she might be falling for the younger student. We have asexual rep, possibly a romantic or lesbian, and then the other character thinks that she's asexual, aromantic, and she might actually be a lesbian. So I don't know what will happen. I've only read the first volume. Also, I really like the way in which the main character just isn't like everyone else. They're not immediately like, oh my god, I've fallen in love with you at first sight. You've cured me. The main character tells the other girl, okay, but I don't like you. Like, she can't understand why the other girl likes her, and she doesn't like the other girl. You know where sometimes the character's like, oh, I don't like anybody, and then as soon as the like main love interest confesses to them, they're like, oh my god, I've been waiting for you my whole life. That didn't happen, and I love that that didn't happen, and I'm looking forward to reading volume two. <laughs> Alrighty, and the next thing I read was Battle Royale, which I feel is like a very, very famous book in Japan. I just never got around to it because it's quite long. It's 666 pages, which if the Japanese person knew what 666 like represents, good job, because this book is essentially satanic. It's just killing off a bunch of students that are trapped on an island together and they have to fight the death until one is left alive. So I did see the movie a few times before I read the book, but the book surprisingly held up really well. I was worried that because there are 34 characters plus starting out 
that I would not remember, but the author does a really clever thing where um, they keep reminding you of the characters and their traits as they go on, and then when people are whittled out, like we zoom in on that those few students, um, so it's not really like a huge melee setting, it's more of like a really close, close hand-to-hand -hand combat zoom in, um, which I found really, really great. But there was essentially a lot of murder. Like, you know, there's 34 students, so there's supposed to be like 33 murders, so... There was a lot of killing, a lot of different ways, a lot of weapons, and... I feel like the author also did a good job to represent different aspects of humanity through the different characters. Overall, I would give it four stars. It was really good. If you guys have read Battle Royale, let me know what you think down below. I'm always intrigued by books that are so bloody, like if people can stomach it. I think I was fine because they didn't do like anything like too weirdly gruesome. I'm thinking in my mind about Poppy Z. Bright and so many of like the gory scenes where I'm just like, oh. Anyway, I digress. Alright, so let's get on to the last thing so far that I've done this month, which is Blue Drop, a volume one, the manga. So I don't know if you guys have seen up on my channel, but I've done um, my top 20 queer anime and manga recommendations. I did two videos for it, and during that I watched a series called Blue Drop, which is an anime featuring um, schoolgirls who are at a boarding school, and then there's also an invading alien fleet, which is comprised wholly of homosexual female aliens. Their race doesn't even have a male gender, so this series really got me, and I was like, this is so great, I want to read the original text, which was the manga. And then I read the manga, which actually happens a thousand years later than the anime, so they're kind of completely disparate entities unto themselves. And the manga was so bad! It was so violent, so overly sexually explicit when like there was no plot development, and I mean, if you like a futuristic world where the government has created like amorphous alien foreign things that can kill people, and then people who have special abilities that can like create things with their minds. That would be good for you, but like if you want that kind of thing, I would probably recommend like Akira over the, over it because yeah, I just found the anime for Blue Drop to be really tasteful and well done, and then I found the manga for Blue Drop to be like what is this shit right now? So yeah, I gave it two stars, was not impressed. Yeah, so that's kind of how I'm gonna end that. So currently I'm reading two books, The Little Book of Ikigai by Ken Mogi, which is about um, finding your purpose in life, and it's a Japanese concept. I'm almost done with that one. And then the other one I'm reading is uh, Japanese Magnolia, which focuses on the love story between a feudal samurai and one of his peasant farmers. So. Both of them are going really well, so I can't wait to talk to them about them in my next wrap-up for the end of the month, and I'm just having a great day. We're gonna go to a lovely cafe on the river, which has all organic and um, like veggie and miso soup, and I'm so ready for it. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, it would really mean a lot. And without further ado, I'm gonna say bye for now. Toodles! Bye!